हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अनिकेत पावनोजी एंड यू आर वाचिंग बेसिक केमिस्ट्री वेलकम टू द थर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ केमिस्ट्री ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ लिगेंड्स एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी आईयूपीएससी नॉमिनक्लेचर ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो IUPSC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. This nomenclature system is used for organic compounds as well as for inorganic compounds. Let's understand the rules of nomenclature of coordination compounds. The first one is while naming an ionic compound the positive ion it may be simple or complex is listed first followed by the negative ion. For example in case of cobalt H2O6 bromide the first part is the positive ion and the second part is the negative ion the positive ion is to be named first in the second example sodium ion is the first part and cobalt cl6 is the second part so the positive ion we have to name first in the third example platinum nh34 cl2 is the first part that is the positive ion and platinum cl42 minus is the negative part here the first bracket that is the positive ion is to be named first second rule is within the complex ion complex ion means the square bracket this is called as complex ion the ligands are named first and then the metal in the last video we have seen that in this coordination compound or in this complex ion surrounding moiety is called as ligand and this is cobalt is called as central metal atom we have to name ligand first and then the central metal atom if there are more than one ligands then ligands are listed in alphabetical order irrespective of being neutral negatively or positively charged for example in this case cobalt is the central metal atom then we have amine as a ligand then there is a water molecule in iupac naming system it is called as aquo or aqua and then we have bromide ion outside the square bracket or present as a negative ion now we have two ligands amine and aqua alphabetically amine comes first and then the aqua now as there are two amine groups and four water molecules while naming this compound when we have to name the ligands we will name it as diamine tetraaqua if this coordination compound or if this coordination sphere contains two or more simple ligands of the same type their number is indicated by putting prefixes as di tri tetra penta hexa septa octa nona deca undeca dodeca etc before their names that is how we have named it as diamine tetraqua let's see various types of ligands and how these ligands are named in iupsc nomenclature system first we will see the neutral ligands this part we have also seen in the last video but we will again revise it while we are studying the nomenclature of coordination compounds the first is the neutral compounds this is called as hydrazine methylamine triethylamine hydroxylamine dimethylamine carbonyl thiocarbonyl aquo or aqua amine triphenylphosphine triethylphosphine dioxygen dinitrogen phosphorus trifluoride pyridine nitrosyl acetonitrile and thionitrosyl these are all neutral ligands let's see some of the negative ligands for example fluoro chloro bromo iodo hydrido or hydro amido imido nitrido hydroxoamido dimethyl amido per hydroxo oxo hydroxo peroxo superoxo mercapto sulfido or thio sulfito and sulfato this is the system used for the monodentate ligands if there are bidentate or polydentate ligands which are also called as chelating agents then if a complex contains more than one ligands which are chelating agents then we have to use bis for 2 tris for 3 tetrakis for 4 instead of using di tri tetra 
and the name of the group is placed in brackets. For example, when we write the formula, En indicates it is ethylene diamine. So, En is an abbreviated or short form of ethylene diamine. When we have to name this compound, we will write it as tris. That is, three ethylene diamine molecules are there. Therefore, we will write it as tris ethylene diamine. Remember, whenever there is a chelating agent, that is, bidentate or polydentate ligands are present, we should not use di, tri or tetra. We should use bis, tris and tetrakis for the chelating agents. Now we come to the next rule that is how to name the central metal atom. In that the first rule is if the coordination sphere of the complex compound has a negative charge on it, the name of the central metal atom ends in ATE. For example, in this case, the chromium atom is inside the square bracket. It is named as chromate. The sodium metal which is outside the square bracket, we have to name it as sodium only. Whether there are 2, 3, 4 or any number of sodium atoms, we have to write it as sodium. As sodium atom is present as an ionization sphere or it is outside the coordination sphere, we have to name it just as sodium. Whether they are di, tri, tetra or any number, we will always write it as sodium. Similarly, we, as we have seen, chromium is named as chromate, cobalt is named as cobaltate, cuprate, palladate, iridate. Osmate, Cadmate, Zincate, Silicate, Nickelate, Aluminate, Borate, Platinate. This is the IUPAC nomenclature system for central metal atom in the coordination sphere and when that coordination sphere is present as a negative part of the coordination compound. As we have seen here, the coordination sphere is present as a negative part. So, sodium atom is having a plus 2 charge. Okay, so there are two sodium atoms, so that means there are plus two charge and chromium atom, so CrOF4 minus 2, this coordination sphere has a negative charge on it, therefore chromium is named as chromate. For some of the metal atoms, Latin names are used. For example, ferrate, argentate, stannate, plummate, aurate and so on. Let's see the rule when the coordination sphere of the complex compound has a positive charge or is neutral or that is non-ionic in charge. In this case, the name of the central metal atom remains as such. For example, in this case, cobalt NH26Cl3, the name of the central metal atom is written as cobalt. In the second example, ion is present, we write it as ion only. This is because the coordination sphere has a positive charge on it. As there are three chloride ions outside the square brackets, there is a negative charge on each chloride atom such that there are three chloride atoms. Therefore, the coordination sphere has a plus three charge on it. In such cases, the name of the central metal atom is written as such. Also, in case of neutral compounds where there is a no charge on it, it is written as ion. In such, in such cases where the coordination sphere has a positive charge on it, or they are neutral in charge, the name of the central metal atom is written as it is. Now let's understand how to write an oxidation state of metal. Oxidation state of metal whether it is positive, negative or zero is written in Roman numerals like 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 etc. in bracket at the end of the name of the metal atom. For example, coh 36 bromide we have to first determine the oxidation state of cobalt. We will consider the oxidation state of cobalt as X. Ammonia is a neutral ligand, therefore it doesn't have any charge. Whereas bromide is a uninegative ion, therefore X plus 6 into 0 minus 3 is equal to 0. The value of X is plus 3, therefore oxidation state of cobalt here is plus 3. Now we have to write the full name of this compound. First rule is we have to write it for the positive part and then for the negative part. The second rule says that we have to name the ligands first inside the square bracket. Therefore, amines will be named first. Then we have to name the central metal atom and then we have to name the negative part of the complex. As there are six ammonia groups, the name of the compound is hexamine cobalt 3. 3 is the oxidation state of the central metal atom, bromide. Now, even though there are three bromide atoms outside the square bracket, it will be written as bromide. No dibromide, no tribromide. Outside the square bracket, any number of atoms, 
they are written as bromide or chloride or iodide whatever let's see one more example nico4 first we will determine the oxidation state we will consider it as x carbonyl is a neutral ligand so 4 into 0 is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 now in this case there is no positive or negative part in it it is a whole neutral complex while naming this compound first we have to name the ligands and then the central metal atom it is named as tetracarbonyl nickel 0 let's see third example k3 fecn6 first we will determine the oxidation state we can see there are three potassium atoms outside the square bracket each potassium atom has a single positive ion charge so plus 3 plus 6 into minus 1 as cyanide has a uninegative charge is equal to 0 the value of x is plus 3 now while naming this compound we have to name the positive part of the complex then the negative part of the complex in this case there are three potassium atoms we can see outside the square bracket but because they are present as a primary sphere we will write it as potassium now the second step is inside the square bracket we have to name the ligands first then the central metal atom as there are six cyanide ligands the name of the compound is potassium hexacyanoferrate 3 we are writing it as ferrate this is because the central metal atom is present in the coordination sphere and coordination sphere has a negative charge on it that is how we have written it as ferrate let's understand with the help of one more example cucl42 minus let's determine the oxidation state of the copper now i think you have learned enough to determine this oxidation state the oxidation state of the copper is determined as plus 2 the first rule is name the ligands first and then the central metal atom now while naming this coordination compound we can see that there are four chlorine atoms therefore we will write it as tetrachloro the copper present as a central metal atom in the coordination sphere is present as a negative part therefore we will write it as cuprate the whole coordination sphere has a negative charge on it minus two charge on it therefore it is present as an ion as we cannot see a positive part in the coordination sphere we have to mention ion at the end the name of the coordination complex is tetrachlorocuprate 2 ion this is how all coordination compounds are named according to the IUPAC nomenclature system for practicing nomenclature of coordination compounds i am giving a link of one of my friend dr amol powers video on nomenclature of coordination compounds please watch the video and if you have any difficulties please mention it in the comment box i will definitely answer for your questions if you like my video click on like do share and subscribe my channel if you want to mention something or ask something mention it in the comment box also hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry thank you